Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless with early voting underway in a few states presidential candidate kamala harris is banking on one key issue to lure voters abortion kamala harris and her running mate tim walls both claim to be christians the problem with that claim is they hate the things god loves and they love the things god hates to run a presidential campaign on abortion shows us where America stands as a nation concerning the ways of God. We can rest assured God will judge America for murdering unborn babies in the womb. So, Georgia, the, this election right here is a fight for the future. It is a fight for the future. And it is a fight for freedom. For freedom. And we know in America... Freedom is not to be given. It is not to be bestowed. It is ours by right. It is ours by right. And that includes the fundamental freedom of a woman to be able to make decisions about her own body and not have her government telling her what to do. And we all know how we got here. When Donald Trump was president, he hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court. The court of Thurgood and RBG. With the intention that they would overturn the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as he intended, they did. And now more than 20 states have Trump abortion bans. Extremists that have passed laws that criminalize health care providers, doctors and nurses, and punish women. In two states of those states, they provide for prison for life. Prison for life for health care providers for simply providing reproductive care, the care they so earnestly and rightly believe must be delivered. The idea that someone who survives a crime of violence to their body, a violation of their body, would not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next? That's immoral. That's immoral. What's immoral is justifying a violent act on an innocent baby because a violent act happened to the mother. A child who is conceived through rape or incest, is made in the image of God, the same as any other human. That child's life should be protected just as much as the life of any other human being. The circumstances of conception never determine the worth of a person or that person's future. And let us agree, and I know we do, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do. The Bible tells us in the last days that people would lack sympathetic understanding, that people would be unfeeling and pitiless toward their own family, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Without natural affection is the Greek word astorgos, which means without affection for family, parents or children, thus hard-hearted towards kindred. I can think of nothing more hard-hearted towards kindred than those who want to murder their own child. If he is elected again as president, Donald Trump will go further. But we know what we're up against and we must, we must speak. 
of the stakes. We must remind. Everybody here knows, but we got to remind our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, the stakes are so high. Because if he is elected again, I am certain he will sign a national abortion ban, which would outlaw abortion in every single state. They just don't trust women. Well, we trust women. We trust women. And like Dr. Reddick said, when Congress passes a bill to restore reproductive freedoms as president of the United States, I will so proudly sign it back into law. I will so proudly sign it into law. Proudly sign it into law. Is abortion murder? The Bible is clear. Murder is wrong, as stated in Exodus 2013. You shall not murder. Murder is defined is the unlawful, premeditated killing of one human being by another. Killing is done by the judgment of one human being against another for personal reasons. The Bible condemns murder repeatedly as a characteristic of a wicked society and places a person in danger of the judgment, as we read in Matthew 5.21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. So, is a fetus a human? Or is it something else? Biologically speaking, human life begins at conception. No more genetic material needs to be added when the mother's egg and the father's sperm come together. They combine and create a new string of DNA that is personalized and totally unique. DNA is coded in information, the blueprint for the new human's growth and development. When a mother has an abortion, she is destroying a unique life. The Bible clearly teaches that conception is the beginning of human life as we read in Judges 16, 17, that he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Samson refers to his unborn self as having already been what God planned him to be, a Nazarite. Again, the psalmist King David wrote that he was wonderfully made by God in his mother's womb as we read in Psalm 139, 13-16. through 16. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet... There were none of them. God says that he knew the prophet Jeremiah before he was in his mother's womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. King Solomon, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, wrote about the child in a mother's womb. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God, who makes everything. A baby in the womb has feelings, as we read in Luke 1.44. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. The baby, who would be known as John the Baptist, experienced the emotion of joy when Mary, being pregnant with the incarnate Jesus, entered Elizabeth's home. God's word has a lot to say about killing the innocent. Proverbs 24.11 and 12. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? Proverbs 6, 16-19 These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. The Bible teaches that at conception, an unborn child is a human being that God is forming. It doesn't really matter what humans mandate is socially or politically acceptable. God's law takes precedence, as we read in Acts 5.29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. A mother who decides to abort her child is making a decision to end another person's life, and that is, and always has been, the definition of murder. 
There is good news for anyone who has had an abortion, and that is that God offers forgiveness to anyone who confesses their sins, as we read in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said, as a sign of His coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Now to the Middle East with Israel killing a top Hezbollah military commander in Beirut. Tension between Israel and Lebanon is mounting after the IDF launched an airstrike in Lebanon's capital of Beirut targeting Hezbollah. The Lebanese health ministry says the strike killed at least 31 people and injured 68. The airstrike killing Ibrahim Akil, one of Hezbollah's top commanders. This is the worst attack there has ever been against the United States in the Middle East. Akil was wanted by the U.S. for his role in the 1983 bombing of the American embassy and Marine Corps barracks in Beirut. It killed more than 300 Americans. Friday's airstrike littering the streets with rubble and debris from destroyed buildings. This strike happened just before rush hour here in Beirut, and it marks the third major attack on a civilian part of the city just this week. Earlier this week, the idea of launching attacks across Lebanon, detonating hundreds of handheld pagers and radios of suspected Hezbollah members, striking fear across the country. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying in a statement regarding the strike, quote, our goals are clear and our actions speak for themselves. Now to the fighting in the Mideast. Israel and Hezbollah exchanging heavy fire overnight. We have witnessed another active day in southern Lebanon and northern Israel, multiple airstrikes overnight, and Hezbollah hitting targets deeper inside Israel and with higher caliber warheads. It is clear now that this war still intensifies. New airstrikes between Israel and Lebanon overnight, lighting up the sky across Lebanon's southern border. The IDF saying Hezbollah was preparing to launch missiles at Israel. As a result, they struck more than 400 targets in Lebanon. <laughs> IDF spokesman Daniel Hagari saying dozens of Israeli Air Force aircraft are currently striking terrorist targets and rocket launchers to remove the threat to Israeli civilians. Hezbollah returning fire, striking this neighborhood outside Haifa. This rocket seen here in Nazareth was intercepted. The group saying part of this morning's rocket barrage was an initial response to the exploding pagers and handheld radios. The simultaneous blast over two days this week killed 37 people and injured thousands, according to Lebanon's health ministry. Our Al Jazeera office in occupied West Bank has just been raided. While in the occupied West Bank, tensions coming to a head as Israeli troops raided the Al Jazeera Bureau in Ramallah. The news organization airing in real time the moment troops forced the bureau to shut down for 45 days. While in Gaza, pure devastation. On Friday, an IDF airstrike hit a school, killing at least 22 people, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. And an update now on that Israeli airstrike that killed a top Hezbollah commander, Ibrahim Akil, here in Beirut. The Lebanese Health Ministry says the death toll has now climbed to 51 as Hezbollah prepares to bury Akil in the funeral here in Beirut in just a few hours from now. And now let's get a read on U.S. strategy from ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz, who is also live in the region in Tel Aviv this morning. And Martha, you have some new reporting. A senior U.S. official telling me this morning that despite efforts by the administration to tamp down things, the U.S. believes a widening conflict with Lebanon is inevitable and that the table is set for escalation. The official said that Israel 
is emboldened after its successful attacks on Hezbollah and that Hezbollah, despite its loss of senior leaders and countless members, is enraged and wants retaliation. The official said President Biden has been briefed on all of this, but there is growing frustration with the Israelis, who the official said have undermined us at every step. A major concern is for the tens of thousands of American citizens living in Lebanon. And there's an ominous State Department warning this morning for Americans not to travel to Lebanon and for those living there to depart Lebanon while commercial options are still available. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24:12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Very hard, breaking news. Another mass shooting overnight in America, this one in Birmingham, Alabama, in an area filled with restaurants and bars. Investigators saying there were multiple shooters who opened fire and an intense search is on for them right now. Think about how terrifying this must have been. This is a crowded area of the city. It's just around 11 o'clock at night, people out for dinner and drinks, and then the gunshots. This morning, police in Birmingham, Alabama are searching for what they believe are multiple shooters who opened fire on a crowd last night around 11 o'clock. It happened in the city's Five Points South area, known for its restaurants and bars, and it is packed on a Saturday night. Video capturing the chaotic aftermath of the shooting. The investigation is still very active, but what we know so far is that three people died at the scene and one other died at the hospital. Dozens are injured so far. We know four of them have life-threatening injuries. It was very devastating, very and sad. Investigators say it appears the shooters took aim at a group of people either on the sidewalk or or in the street. It's unclear if the shooters walked up to the crowd or drove by, but police are trying to figure out if a switch was used. That is a device that allows a gun to fire as an automatic weapon. No motive so far in the attack. Again, four people dead, dozens more injured in just the latest mass shooting in this country. This is what a nation looks like when they tell God they no longer want or need him. Since America will not recognize God as the creator of all things, follow his commandments, and give him the glory that only he deserves. He has left this nation to its own destruction. Proverbs 16.6 6 says, In mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. There is no fear of God in America, and the result is a society full of evildoers. When we are choosing to hold on to sin, rather than repent and change, God will not hear our prayers, as we read in Isaiah 1.15. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers. I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Proverbs 28.9 says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. America continues to do evil and disregard God's moral law, make up a God of our own liking, and continue to do what is right in our own eyes. America continues to lie, steal, blaspheme God's name, fornicate, commit adultery, look at pornography, covet what is not ours, and take human life. Jeremiah 30.12 says, for thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. As a nation, I think America may have reached the point in time where God will no longer hear our prayers because our sin is incurable. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth 
can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.